And here I want to get into this number with our next guest. We've got Bob Iacchino, who's founder of the Chief Strategy of Path Trading Partners, joining us for a look at PPI. Bob, welcome. Good Wednesday morning to you. Let's get into the number here real quick. It does look like whether you're talking the core or the headline in line to slightly lower than expectations, it's going to be a good thing for the bulls. Yeah, definitely is in line with where we saw the CPI figures, which was basically in line or lower than expectations. The one, if you were to look at CPI and say, pick one thing out of there that the Fed may not like, it's that core inflation yeah. was the same month over month as it was the previous month. Yeah. And we have a similar situation here with PPI, where the numbers are in line, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, in line, but that core PPI month over month exactly where it was last month. The beautiful thing about the headline numbers both days is that they're both lower than last month. That's really what you want to see is that trend lower. Um, I saw a headline from one of the research analysts that I, well, I'll say who it is, Mike Singleton over at Invictus Research. The headline of his note today was inflation cool, but is it cool enough? I like to use the analogy that if I were comfortable at 180 pounds, and I shot up to four times that, somewhere in the range of 600, 650 pounds. And then I drop back to 360 pounds. Am I still at the right weight? And that's kind of what's happened with inflation right now. We got inflation running at 4%. If you took out all the highs, uh, the 9%, the 8%, the 7%, just cut that off and sit at 4% inflation, we're at 40 year highs on inflation. And people keep forgetting that inflation is an index. The drop from 9% to 4% doesn't mean inflation is falling. It's the rate of change of inflation is easing. If you look at a CPI chart, it's straight up, except for what? Recession. In recessions, and then a couple of other odd points, you can see prices fall a little bit. That $10 cheeseburger that is now $20 is not going back to $10. Well, good thing you're not a voting member here, Bob. Uh, it sounds like you'd be uh, suggestive of further rate hikes. I mean, well, look, Ben. Here's here's what I don't understand. We have right now, if you look at the CME Fed Watch tool, we have about a 95% chance of a pause, which Patrick Harker from the Philadelphia Fed dubbed a skip. So now we're all calling it a skip. So if you take his him at his word, didn't like pause, he liked skip. Well, what does a skip mean? means skip the rate hike until the next meeting, which is currently what the market is pricing in as the highest probability. Not a high probability, it's somewhere around 60%, but they're pricing in a rate hike in July. And they're pricing in that final level of 550, 575, or I think it's five and a quarter to 550, as about a 60% probability. And then the market has slowly taken those eases out. You remember a couple of shows ago, mm -hmm. we had the first ease priced into July. Mm -hmm. Then it got priced into uh, November. Now it's priced into December. And so if we're holding rates higher for longer, is the market pricing that in? And I'm referring to commodities as well as stocks. Are the markets pricing in that we're going to be at the highest level of Fed funds rates since 2008 all the way through December? I would say no. I would also say that I think the market will continue to price these eases out of the market as we remain with a stronger consumer and a fairly robust jobs market. We saw the job, the unemployment rate go to 3.7%, but the Chicago Fed says full employment is 4.1%. So we're still a ways away from that, and we're a ways away from the Fed 2% target. And there's a lot of people saying that, people like myself, because I'm still in the recession camp, got the recession call wrong. And I think I told you this before, it might have been Ali, but you know, in 1966, it didn't snow in Chicago until December 28, but it still snowed. So I think when you look at all the things that are pointing, all the red flashing lights we have pointing to recession, they haven't stopped flashing yet. And the only component that is still strong is the labor market and to a certain degree consumer spending, but even that's starting to slow. Well, the concern being here that that strong labor market is going to impact wages. Eventually, we'll see that kick into gear and the Fed has to act a little bit more aggressively. Uh, to your point, maybe uh, with inflation still relatively high, uh, there is some work still to do here in terms of that. Uh, let's talk a little bit away from the Fed and financial markets here because I wanted to get into what's going on in terms of commodities, very much range bound and contained, right? Much like rate 
debates. We could uh, describe crude as such. We heard from the IEA some comments about uh, consumption de decreasing, ultimately uh, a shift to, uh, well, away from fossil fuels a little bit sooner than expected. But this is something we've been hearing about for a long time right now. And it seems to be taken in stride in many ways by the WTI and price activity. They're very comfortable to $70 level still. Yeah, you take a look at the uh, the OPEC report, for example, and even though OPEC cut production, which was really the Saudis cutting production, right? Um, they still left their demand prediction unchanged, which was stronger demand. Now, for anybody who's been watching oil as long as I have and as closely as I have, you always know that OPEC's bent or their bias is towards higher oil mm -hmm. prices. So them leaving their demand estimates in place is a little bit of a sort of when the Fed tries to job the market with words. It's almost like the Saudis and, and OPEC are trying to do that. They're trying to let you know, look, we still see demand coming back. The Chinese reopening has been underwhelming at best. I mean, if you're going to give the most positive statement, you'd call it underwhelming. And the People's Bank of China just uh, cut their reverse repo rate by 10 basis points. So they clearly think it's been underwhelmed, um, underwhelming as well. And we saw a bid in crude oil yesterday. We saw a bid in copper. We're seeing another bid in crude oil today. But both of those were underwhelming as well, not just from a perspective of um, the price action themselves, but from the patterns they sort of represented. When you looked at copper, and crude yesterday, you basically had uh, rallies that didn't exceed the previous day's highs, even though the previous day's highs were negative days. So not much of a rally there at all from a technician's perspective, and certainly not from a fundamental perspective. So what we're seeing here likely in crude oil to a certain degree copper is that the short-term downtrends are going to continue. And this was just a little bit of short covering from speculative uh, traders who say, you know what, we got to be careful with the People's Bank of China. We got to be careful, careful with the OPEC demand estimates and what they might do based on that. So I think that's really what we're looking at here. If you look, if you start to see commodities really ramp up, then you're likely seeing a scenario where the Fed rate cuts are being fully believed by the commodity markets. Mm -hmm. That hasn't necessarily been the case as of yet. Yeah, it's been interesting because the dollar's been, well, hanging out even this morning down below 103, right? We haven't really seen that snap back there. And uh, the only thing that's really been overwhelming, you spoke of China being underwhelming, seems to be uh, U.S. production ultimately, which is maybe kind of keeping a cap on some of those prices as well. Bob, appreciate you joining us here. A look at the PPI to talk commodities here this Wednesday morning. Bob Iaccino, the founder of the Chief Strategist of Path Trading Partners.